Well, let's talk about it, man. Okay. You got some really incredible stuff going on. I see you got the fan base on your chest. Always got to rep. Okay, you got to rep your thing. Okay, yeah. uh, and I love what you're doing with your social media platform. So before we jump in, you just I know I gave a brief bio, but do you have some things that maybe you'd like to share just about you individually before we jump in and start talking about what you're working on? Um, I was a, a career songwriter producer. Um, started managing my father's estate, the late Isaac Hayes and just stumbled upon a kid from Memphis that went viral for dancing in a Spider-Man costume. Okay. Shot him a DM and said, congrats, young Memphis. You know, he, I'm from Memphis, he's from Memphis, and he hit me back like, are you a manager? And I'm like, no, not really, because I need a manager. I really need a manager. And so he was trying to figure out how to monetize this moment. And I was like, well, he doesn't own Spider-Man. You yeah. know, if Marvel, Disney want to shut that down whenever they want to, they can. And so um, I was like, People need to be able to subscribe to him, mm -hmm. like Netflix, so people can learn how to dance like him. And yeah. that was the birth of fan base. Um, and at the time, and I and I say this like very very confidently, fan base was the first social media application, native application that allowed a user to subscribe to another user mm -hmm. via in-app purchase. Okay. And when we first did it, Apple wouldn't even allow us to do what we wanted to do, so we had to come up with some workarounds. Yeah. But we made it happen and built fan base and. Uh, Launched it, and then um, in 2020, during COVID, um, I was I was you know given the idea by some close friends of mine that you need to do equity crowdfunding. Yeah, and I was like, what better way to fund a, a social media startup than let people that actually use it have equity? And so we did two successful rounds on Start Engine, raising a total of six million dollars. Okay, um, I'm the first African American man to raise six million dollars in equity crowdfunding. Rex EF. Come so, on. Come on, man. Get your money, man. Get your money, I'm man. I'm happy about that. Yeah, you should be. So um, um, so we got the fan base. And so um, I did bring some slides, but we can still talk and, yeah, and please. do that. But what I, what I say is, like, fan base is a photo, video, audio streaming, live form, um, long form uh, audio content platform that allows anybody to follow you for free, but also subscribe to you for $4.99 a month for the, the same content that you can create. Um, and our belief is everyone is a fan of something, but more importantly, every single person has a fan base. And so that's, that's, that's the method behind um, the idea of the platform. It's not, sometimes people say, well, is it for artists? It's for every single person because every single one of us are content creators, right? Whether you post a million times a day or once a year, these platforms run ads in between the content and make a bunch of money. Um, and so, um, when I ask the question all the time, I ask people all the time, what do Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat pay users for their content? They don't pay them a dime. And matter, as a matter of fact, um, platforms are getting rich off the creativity of users. They run ads, make billions of dollars, and give nothing back to the creator. In fact, Facebook and Instagram together made $115 billion in ad revenue in 2021. So that's a lot of money, and a lot of people aren't seeing that. And then if you know about social media, um, it's a, it's a young person's game. And I just have a belief that every single social media platform will live and it will die, right? Um, uh, uh, MySpace is dead. Facebook is a senior citizen, in my opinion. <laughs> Instagram is middle-aged. Uh, Snapchat's a millennial. TikTok's a centennial. And I want to position fan base to be the generation alpha centennial platform. Because um, once my mom got on Facebook, I left Facebook. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> And kids are always going to want to be on apps that their parents are not on. doesn't matter what. So there's no yeah. amount of, I don't care what type of innovation Facebook builds. If somebody's grandmother's there, they're not going to be there. Yeah, it's, it's too many like, Farmville requests yeah, is what's exactly. happening. It just, it, just gets, it just gets way too crazy. The kids was like, no more Farmville, <laughs> Grandma. We, don't, we not own that no more, okay? Um, secondly, what people talk about and, and what's most impo important to know is that youth culture right, drive the growth of social media, especially black culture. Like young kids create dances, slang, videos, all these things, and they drive that. And, and people agree, Jason Calacanis said this like, a, a, like almost a year or two ago that, you know, like, like someone should run and back a black-led TikTok killer um, because they understand that black culture drives the growth of these social media platforms. And I think that's what makes fan base in itself a little dangerous and disruptive because it's the first time where the culture and the tech are owned by the same person. But more importantly, I'm gonna explain that the era that we're moving in to everybody that I think people should know about, and that's the subscription era. We are in the subscription era, right? And what that means is like, 
uh, every social media is the, is the last media that is not primarily subscriber based, right? So think about it, like your video on demand services, your music streaming services, your print media, your productivity software, all of them are subscriber based. You gotta subscribe to Microsoft Word, all this kind of stuff. Um, and so, in, in fact, in 2020, 54% of all in-app purchases were recurring. So those are subscriptions. And so that's kind of where we are. And so um, my belief in understanding the way that we're with technology, because there's 6.3 billion people on the planet with smartphones, but Netflix only has 222 million subscribers. And so I'm coining a phrase and, and telling you what the error is, and that's the micro microcast era, right? And so microcast media is the future, right? And they're like, what's microcast media? I don't know what that means. So the explanation of microcast media is, uh, most of our lives we've known about broadcast media, right? We've known about DirecTV, Comcast, Xfinity. These are networks with large subscriber-based cable networks with hundreds of channels, right? That's broadcast. And then in the last maybe 10 or 15 years, we've moved into the narrowcast generation, right? So you have your video on demand services, Netflix, Disney, Hulu, HBO Max, Apple TV, Prime Video, right? Smaller subscription platforms with tons and tons of content. But I watch, I have a Netflix subscription, but I only like, you know, only watch a little amount of program with all of the content that's on there. Uh, and so the microcast format is I subscribe directly to you. I subscribe directly to Beyonce. I subscribe directly to Kylie Jenner, to Nike, to Louis Vuitton, to the Lakers, to an influencer for the content they create directly on your phone. And so that's the difference. And so that's going to be, that's going to be the future. I'm saying it now, like I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter if, if fan base builds it, the direction of what media is going is direct, direct, person to person subscription is the future. That's just what's gonna happen. And there's gonna be a lot of money that's gonna be made because we're gonna go from the billionaire era to the trillionaire era, and we're gonna go very, very fast. Um, the difference between fan base and any other platforms is we don't suppress content, we allow you to reach all your followers, and you have full content monetization. And everybody's heard these words about shadow banning and content suppression. I'm here to tell you that every single person in this room and every single person on social media is suppressed. And the reason why is because once advertising became part of social media, platforms had to suppress your visibility to make money. Meaning, I'll give you the best example I can give. Beyonce has 273 million followers on social media. That means 273 million people want to know what Beyonce is doing. That is two and, over two and a half times the reach of the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl only comes on once a year for about five or six hours a day. But Beyonce is connected to 273 million people, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That means that brands, if she could reach that many people, they could go hand a check to Beyonce for $14 million for a 30 second spot on her, on her Instagram page and she'd never have to work again. Facebook and Instagram know that, so they minimize your content because if that's the case, the brands would always come and pay the people with the most following and not pay Instagram and Facebook for ads. So they would have no ad business. So they suppress everybody's content. And you can even look on your own page and say, you can go to Beyonce's page right now and be like, yo, Beyonce has 273 million followers. Maximum, her videos reach about six or seven million people. That's it, that's the most. And then they want you to boost your post to reach those people. So in order for us to become successful on social media, we need to become Beyonce. <laughs> well, you need to be able to have the reach of Beyonce, right? Okay. Um, and that's what we do. And so fan base like, is super, super simple, right? You can follow anyone for free. You can subscribe to the exact same person for $4.99 a month. You can unlock content using virtual currency we call love that you buy. I play video games, so I understand. Like I play Call of Duty, I understand about Call of Duty points, Fortnite, 2K, virtual currency that young kids are using. So you use that virtual currency to do two things, unlock content and tip people for the content that they make. So imagine having all your content that's on Instagram right now or on TikTok right now, and it being on fan base, and now it is a virtual tip jar. You don't, you're not saying pay me, it's like, uh, you took a dope a photo of some pizza, I wanna throw you a few cents, here's a few cents and that's how you do it. Um, we have tons and tons of features, right? So we have photo and video, we have uh, Flix, which is our version of TikTok and Reels short form video. We have audio rooms like Clubhouse and Twitter Spaces. Um, and we were the first app to monetize audio spaces, even via subscription. You can have subscriber-based audio rooms so the people that can only see the room have to, come, have to subscribe to you to come in there and see the room. Um, uh, stories, we can put behind paywalls. Live, so those hearts that float up on Instagram that mean absolutely nothing. On fan base, when people tap that, 
they, they give you half a penny every time they tap that. And then Fanbase Plus, and Fanbase Plus is extremely important to talk about. So Fanbase Plus is long form content. So that's the ability to post up to two hours worth of content and put it behind a paywall. So every single person in here is Netflix. You're Netflix, but you're Netflix inside of a social network. So you can share and send your, send your show, your podcast, your master class, anything you're thinking about, you can be able to send that to people and monetize that to a level that you don't understand. That there's so many, and, and, and when I say this is the gaming community has been monetizing from day one. Podcast community is just now catching up and they're making tons and tons of money. You'd be surprised that their podcasters on Patreon are making $222,000 a month off 43,000 people. That's it. 5,000 people subscribing to you, right? For $2.50 a month is $12,500 a month, $1.5 million a year. So I know people with two, three million followers that can't pay their rent. But I know people with 50,000 subscribers that are millionaires. And that's the difference. It's not the, the, the money is not in your following, the money is in your fan base. Um, and so that's what I talk about with fan base. Plus, think about, think about your very own subscription content channel. Because eventually, down the path, when we raise like, you know, a Series A, and we're, we're starting for Series A now, but when we raise Series A, think fan base plus is going to be like Disney Plus and Hulu and Netflix, and we'll make our own content. But the difference is it will be inside of a social network. Again, shareable content and scalable content. Um, on top of all that, I'm a disruptor. I like to be mischievous. Um, and I wanted it. I wanted to make it easy for people to come to fan base. And so I had my CTO on the team build something. Um, and, and what it is, is we allow you to copy your entire Instagram or TikTok and just paste it over on fan base. So that's really, really cool. Um, for those of you that know about repost apps, you know, I was like, let's just make a big ass repost app that just copies every photo, every caption, and just paste it over on fan base because moving your content makes moving your audience a lot easier. <clears throat> and I give the explanation of if your favorite restaurant opened up on the other side of town and you went there and all they had is water and straws, you're going back to the old restaurant. But if you go back to, if you go to the new restaurant, they have everything that they had, the old restaurant and more, then you're going to go over there and you're going to stay and you're going to start build community over there. Um, <clears throat> on top of that, here's how other platforms are copying us. And I know this is like, and this is real. I know, and I know for a startup and sometimes it seems unbelievable, but people really, really copy what we do. Like, like, absolutely. So, so we launched uh, Tipping uh, uh, Audio Rooms. Clubhouse did that. Um, we had a creator conference. Uh, no, matter of fact, we, we said we were going to build subscriber-based stories. And um, Instagram said, we're going to do that, and we're going to call them fan clubs. I'm like, okay, we're fan base. Y'all fan clubs. That's what Instagram does. Um, we had a creator conference here in Atlanta, Georgia, July of last year. I flew 25 young people out, people of color, talked to them about the app. And their, and their meaning to culture and what it means. Triller said, we're gonna do the same thing and try to hire the same exact kids called the Collab Crib. They tried to hire my event planner to run the event. Um, <clears throat> COVID spiked back up and they couldn't do it. So they had to cancel it, made it virtual. But I don't know if people realize this, they promised a lot of young kids some money. And maybe about two weeks ago, there was an article in the Washington Post how Triller didn't pay any of these kids. It was like 2,000 young black kids, they were missing payments, they didn't get any of the payments. They made all this content for Triller and Triller didn't pay them. But I, I was bothered by that because they took something that was genuine to what we were doing and, and kind of made it, you know, corny. Um, and then they, they, you know, they, they said they were gonna offer equity stock options and stuff like that, and they didn't do any of that. And then we raised our price from $3.99 to $4.99 um, for subscriptions, and the very next day, Instagram started giving subscriptions to everybody black. All my friends, like, did you see this? Instagram gave me subscriptions, they gave me subscriptions, and I know it's hard to believe, but platforms are watching this because they're based in ads, so they can't turn that ship of ad revenue and go to a rev share subscription model. So, when I talk about how much money is on the table, right, I'm gonna say like 95% of people that follow you on social media follow you passively. That means they follow you like a magazine at a checkout aisle at the grocery store, or they're nosy, or they're haters, right? <laughs> That's just it. Everybody hate on your content. <clears throat> the other 5% are your fan base. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about how much money can be made, and I'm going to use Kylie Jenner as an example. So I'm going to take Kylie Jenner's Instagram, right? So 5% of the people that follow Kylie Jenner, just 5% of the people that follow her and, and subscribe to her for $4.99 a month, and she made $2.50. They make half the revenue on fan base. She would make 45 million a month, $546 million a year. That is the future. That's what I mean by billionaire to trillionaire error because that's possible. She has, she has that many people 
You know what I'm saying? There's, she has 15 million people around the world that were subscribed to her for $4.99 a month for makeup tutorials, for Kylie Cosmetics, for her private life, her and Stormy and the baby, what they're doing, a reality show, all this kind of stuff. People will subscribe to that. So that is the absolute future. And that's anybody. When you think about, when you take this same scenario and use The Rock as an example, right? The Rock would make about half a billion a year. So what could The Rock do? The Rock would be like, I'm gonna go film my own movie and put it on my fan base page and make all the money. I don't need Netflix. I can still do studio movies, but I don't have to do a movie on Netflix again. I can film my own movie, put it on my fan base page, and make all the money. Because now it's in the social network. Because like I said, there's going to be an Apple TV, Fan Base Plus app, Fire Stick, Roku, desk. we're on the desktop and the phone now. So that is the, the future of uh, fan base and, and, and subscriber social media, microcast. That's it. Now we can wrap. This is, uh, if this is what you want, clearly it's available. Like, I think, honestly, when I listen to you talk, like, I don't think anybody who is trying to create and build something likes the idea of being suppressed or being shadow banned or yeah. engagement slow. And I, I, the, the question I kind of want to ask you is, is the solution to the suppression just essentially moving platforms? Well, I think you should date apps, okay. right? I think there should be no loyalty to social media, including the fan base, because there's a right combination that you can have with the social media platform. Like if DJ Khaled would have remained loyal sure. to, to MySpace or Facebook or Instagram, he would have met Snapchat, which is the love of his life. It changed his life. Yeah. If he would have been faithful. So I said, cheat on your apps, mm. right? You know, Jason Derulo like, had, had all but kind of disappeared from the music scene. He got on TikTok, TikTok and he's one of the most popular people. But if he would have stayed on Instagram, he would have been like all the other artists that you don't hear about of his generation. They probably still make music. Sean Kingston, you know what I'm saying? Jordan Sparks. Everybody was out around the same time. You're talking that 2000s right? talk right, right now. You know what I'm saying? But Jason was like, I'm going out with Snap. I'm going out with TikTok. And, yeah. and he's one of the most popular people on the platform and has, has created a new life for himself. So Incredible. Um, well, this is... I'm just so mind blown by all this. Anybody else in the same position I'm in? I'm like... I'm like, the revolution is upon us. It's going to happen, I promise you. It's like, it like, whether fan base does it or not, the ability to take out your phone, right, and click a couple buttons and subscribe directly to the person. Like I said, I have Netflix, right? I've watched two things on Netflix in the past year, and I'm pretty sure all of you are not watching dozens and dozens of shows on Netflix. I watched the Dave Chappelle comedy special, and I watched Kanye West documentary. But I was like, well, why don't I just subscribe to Dave Chappelle and Kanye West? Mm. Why do I need to subscribe to have all this other stuff that I'm not paying attention to? Eliminating the middleman. Yeah. Direct and to consumer. Direct to consumer media, microcast media. It's Come like, on, man. I'm going to subscribe directly to the person that I want. I'll, I'll ask, like, does anybody, in, does anybody here like Louis Vuitton? Like, any of the ladies like Louis Vuitton? It's okay. Clap. It's okay. It's okay to be bougie. Go ahead, I'll, raise that hand. Okay, cool. I don't, I'm so, not saying I like it. question is, you would it. you subscribe to Louis Vuitton for $4.99 a month for them to show you early access to products that they're releasing. Matter of fact, because you're a subscriber, you can buy them before anybody else. And as a matter of fact, since they're making so much money with their subscribers on fan base, they can give away a $10,000 handbag a week. Mm. And your girlfriend went one, he's like, yo, I'm not leaving. Because they're giving away $10,000 handbags like it's nothing. Or you're a Lakers fan, right? And Lakers throw you some courtside seats. You have early access to opportunities and things. Subscription as a perk, right? Anybody been to Slutty Vegan here? Hey, the lines are crazy, right? But imagine subscribing to Slutty Vegan on Fanbase and you get to cut the line. Mm. I don't have to wait. And there's a menu on Slutty Vegan that I can order from that no one else can order because unless you're a Fanbase subscriber. So subscription as a perk or a privilege is also something that you can do via technology. And I think, like I said, this is going to change. It's going to change the world. Well, um, first of all, thank you for presenting. This is what I will say. There is something about just the air that you bring to the table, very authentic, very true. You're not trying to sell us or pitch us anything. You're giving us the raw facts about what the future looks like. And we thank you for that. And the future is good, ladies and gentlemen. It it's truly wide is. Open. And it's wide open. And we thank you for coming and presenting that to us. So would you please, one more time, make some noise for Isaac Hayes III. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much. For real. Appreciate it.